So, hey, everybody, have you been watching our show? This is part three. And what three other things make up your credit score? We're here today with Rhonda Johnson, Cornerstone Home Lending, who is going to continue our five part series on credit scoring and the things that you really need to know. So, hey, Rhonda, how are you today? Hey, Melissa, doing excellent. How are you? I'm great. So can you tell our viewers how long you've been in the mortgage industry? Can you believe that next month is going to be 39 years I've been doing this? So oh. June 7th, 1983. Oh my goodness. That is a long time. You and I have been working together about 16 years. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And gosh, what, what an exciting uh, partnership has been. So I just wanted to let you know how much I appreciate working with you. Well, and I love working with you because the amount of information I have learned, which is why we chose to start doing these classes, because I had one of my team members say, wow, that was an amazing phone call when I'd been standing at a house and we were showing a buyer a property and one of my team members was there and I picked up the phone and called you and said, hey, do you have a few minutes? I'd like you to talk to this buyer. And just this, I think this five-part credit scoring series is so informational for anybody, whether you think yeah. you have credit here or whether you think your credit is here. Right. Bottom line is Rhonda's going to give you tips and tricks on how to make sure you're maximizing your credit score to take advantage, advantage of low interest rates and low fees. Right. So today we have three, three things that make up the last part of the credit scoring, right? Right. So remember our first class was on your payment history. How does that affect your credit score, which is the biggest piece to your credit score, but it's only 35% of the overall score. So there's 65% of other things that affect your credit score. The next one we talked about was how much you owe on your revolving credit uh, accounts. So these are your credit cards and that kind of thing. So your balance to your limits has a 30% impact. And that if you didn't have a credit card at all, you could be losing up to 255 points of your credit score. So that's a huge factor as well. Now there's three more things that are gonna affect your credit score that we wanna talk about. So the first one is um, the length of time that you've had your credit. So sometimes, you know, if we have somebody who's either just starting out and building their credit, we might ask them to get a secured credit card to start building credit, or maybe somebody was fine with their credit, they had some kind of a life event, and now they're trying to rebuild again after this life event. And we might have them get a couple of secured credit cards to help rebuild. And oftentimes they're little balances, so like 500 or or $1,000. And then as credit starts building, they get better offers with higher limits. And so the, in, the original tendency is to close out those original first cards that they got to help rebuild. But I really encourage everybody to continue to use those first ones because that's going to give you a 15% boost in your score by keeping those accounts as long as you can. Now, when you have a, say like a car loan and you start it off very high and then you pay it down, pay it down, pay it down until it's paid off. Once that closed loan is about 24 months old, it's going to start fading out of your credit history. So those things are kind of short term credit scoring impacts. But when you have a credit card, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And so it helps build up that length of credit history. Hmm. Okay. And so again, something really to think about, don't just be chopping up credit cards. Talk right. to a mortgage lender first. If you're thinking about making a large purchase that's going to require financing, correct? Exactly. Right. So keep those older accounts open. Um, I think I told you a story, personal story of I had a couple of credit cards. My husband's family is 100% out of state. And so I always kept these credit cards just hanging out because I knew with his family aging, we were going to have some emergency plane trips. And when it was interesting, because when COVID hit, then people were getting laid off. They were using their credit cards to live and then they weren't able to make those minimum monthly payments. So the credit card companies kind of did this big sweep and they said, um, if they haven't been used in a year, we're just going to close them out because we don't want people to get into financial trouble, charge them up and not be able to pay. So I'd had these two credit cards for 20 plus years forever. And I got a letter in the mail saying, 
uh, by the way, we've closed your account. And it had over a hundred, well, not over. It was about a 95 point hit on my credit score for closing out those two credit cards that I'd had for over 20 years, never late payment, no balances or anything on them, just because they were closed, 95 point drop in my credit score. Oh my goodness. And it's and, and of no fault of yours because they just were a zero balance, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. They were oh just my goodness. hanging out in the file cabinet. So me. like you said before, you have every credit card, have a little tiny, like Netflix, Disney, yeah. Hulu, something, right. go buy a right. gallon of gas, exactly. well, a gallon exactly. of gas today. Yes. Not <laughs> well, that could max, max out your credit card today, but <laughs> um, yeah. So every 90 days you want to put something on it. So it has activity. Um, and then keeping those older accounts is going to help your credit score. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Cause I have had clients ask me that before. Do I just need to cut up some credit card? No, call Rhonda. Uh -uh. Don't yeah. do anything until you talk to Rhonda. Yes. Yes, exactly. So then our next factor that composes the next 10% of your score is going to be the mix of credit. So here's the secret sauce. They would like to see in your credit profile that you have at least one installment loan. So that's going to be like a car loan or a student loan. They like to see that you have a minimum of two, but not necessarily more than five revolving credit accounts. So this is going to be your credit cards, lines of credit, um, furniture loans that look like a line of credit, that kind of thing. So short term, charge them up, pay them down kind of accounts. And then the mortgage loan. So that's the magic mix for another 10% boost. So one installment account, three to five credit cards, and then your mortgage loan. Perfect. Perfect. Because I think that we have definitely worked with clients before where you've actually had to have them go into the local credit union and get that $500 secured credit card to start building their credit and using their AT&T payment bills that they've had for two years, because, you know, iPhones are somewhat, some of that stuff is more expensive sometimes than furniture yeah. that you put in your house. Exactly. So, yes. Right. Okay. Right. And then this helps establish credit, but again, it's 10%, but it could hurt you. I mean, 10% could get you that little. Right. Because I know we've had some very well-established clients that, didn't have a mix of credit. All they have is a mortgage loan. They pay cash for everything. They don't exactly. do anything else. Mm -hmm. And you know, kind of the sad thing too is here within the last, let's say three to five years, I've had quite a few clients that were elderly and they had sold their big homes, downsized into a small home. And now suddenly they're finding themselves as grandparent parents. And so they're becoming the parents to some grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And they are having to re upsize their homes again because their little homes aren't big enough. And they were in those positions of where I just pay cash for everything. Everything is owned free and clear. We've downsized, we've managed well, we don't need credit. And I've had to actually go through this whole process with them and help them build their credit back up, even though they don't owe a dime in the world to anybody. Well, because a buyer can purchase a property with what is it called non-traditional credit it's just Correct. the interest rate you would pay is so much higher and today with interest rates above five right we don't want to get to the eights or the nines i mean when they were at two and a half three percent what did it matter but exactly exactly you definitely want to be partnering with somebody like a Rhonda johnson at cornerstone home lending because honestly that's the information she's going to help you understand so that you do get that best rate with those lowest fees. Right, right. And our next session, we're going to show what an impact your score has on the potential rates and fees. So, um, mm -hmm. so that'll be our, our next session. Part four. Yeah. And so now inquiries. So I get this question a lot. Am I going to have an impact on my score when you pull my credit report or when I apply for your loan? And the answer is yes. Now that's not true for all inquiries into your credit report because there's soft inquiries and hard inquiries. So the soft inquiries are going to be um, you checking your own credit so that won't hit your score, current creditors checking your credit, uh, landlords, employers. So those are all soft inquiries they don't affect your score. But when you go and apply for new credit that you don't currently have, 
that's going to be a hard inquiry and that's what's going to affect your score. Now, something really important to know is that when you buy something like a car, because, oh my gosh, they're like so expensive these days, or a mortgage, those are pretty big ticket purchases. And so it's wise for you to maybe do a little bit of shopping and comparing and seeing um, what kind of deals you can get. So if you do that within a 14 day window, then you're not going to keep getting hit, hit, hit on your credit score with multiple inquiries for those two large purchases. So remember last time you went into the dealership and you bought a new car and then you maybe looked at your credit report and you saw 10 or 14 inquiries for this one car purchase all on the same day. Well, sometimes people will say, um, oh my gosh, they just tanked my credit score, but that's not really true. That car dealership knew they could go check all of the potential lenders for your car loan in that same day and only hit you once with one inquiry. But of course their goal is to get you the best financing option so that you'll actually buy that vehicle. So the 14 day window on those two major purchases is important to note. Um, and these inquiries actually stay on your credit report for one full year. And so you want to make sure that if you're applying for credit, it's really important that enough to have that thing showing up on your credit report for a full year. Depending on your credit score, it could affect you anywhere from 5 to 25 points per inquiry. So the thing is, is that if you have really good credit and you inquire to get some new credit, you've pretty much already proven you can handle the credit you've been given. And so they're not going to punish you for getting new credit. But if you have a much lower score and you're not managing the credit you've been given very well, and then you apply for some new credit, it hits you with a bigger hit because they kind of try to implode this ability to get new credit until you get that under control. And then you can go get new credit once you've got your current bills under control. So the number of points you're going to get hit is also going to depend on what that credit score originally is. Wow, such great information. And then and, what is this? 10 what? Yeah, so your credit score is only going to rank the first 10 inquiries on your credit report. So anything more than 10 is just going to kind of hang out there as, as inquiries. Um, so, you know, once you have 10, it's not quite as critical as how many you have, except that once 10 falls off, you got 10 more moving up again. Um, mm -hmm. So just kind of keep that in mind. And the other thing to keep in mind when it comes to buying like a home is if we see a bunch of inquiries on your credit report, then we're going to ask you, did you get any new credit as a result of those inquiries? So you want to be prepared oh, for that too, because we want to know if you have another debt to pay back that's going to affect your ability to pay back this mortgage. And that's why when we are out shopping with buyers, I always tell them, okay, you love this house. We've made the offer. The offer has been accepted. I know you think you want to go buy new furniture. You want to go in to one of the local furniture stores and they're going to say, hey, no problem. Just fill out our don't pay me for three years kind of thing. Right. Well, that'll ding your credit, which looks then like open credit again, which could affect the whole credit score, that big whole picture. Big so picture. that's why you and I always joke and say top ramen and toast and don't make any decisions about buying anything until it's actually recorded. Yep. Because these things will affect your credit. And for some people on that little border, that 25% yes. drops you down and then you can't. Right. They exactly. all of a sudden don't qualify. Because don't you guys pull the credit report again right before closing? Correct. So we do a refreshed credit report within 10 days of closing. And again, they're going to be looking for those inquiries. They're going to make sure the credit score hasn't changed. They're going to be looking for any new derogatory credit. So you need to be really focused on buying your house and nothing else. Right. I always say buy the garage first, think about the car later, <laughs> and um, let's get you into your home, the roof over your head, before we try to get some new wheels, you know? Um, so yeah, so those are the last three factors. So payment history, uh, balance to limits, the length of credit, the mix of credit, and inquiries. Those are the factors. And that makes up the 100%. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you're just tuning in to part three, make sure that you go watch part one and part two to learn about part one. 
talked about the first thing about credit scoring and what that percentage is. Part two was the other percentage. And it's very important that you understand that there was some great tips in there. So thank you, Rhonda, very much. This has been great information for our viewers. Anything else you want to share? No, I'm just kind of excited uh, for our, our next week's session to show um, how this all ties together. How does this actually affect you personally? And this will be not only just for buying a, a home, but credit cards, student loans, car loans. So it affects everything in your life. So we'll be going into that in a little bit more detail next time. And imagine if this was just taught at high schools all across the country. I know, wow, right? What a different world we'd have today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the interesting about... thing, <laughs> uh, interesting thing though, is that whenever I talk about this with teachers, then they always say, gosh, why didn't I ever know this? Why didn't nobody ever teach me this? So mm -hmm. that's why they don't teach it to the students in high school because they didn't know it because they weren't taught it. Well, the beauty is today, we have this thing called YouTube. And yes. so if I want to know something, I type on YouTube, how do I fix my credit? So we will make sure that these types of shows pop up when you're searching for that. So please make sure that you put comments in our channel and let us know if you like what we're doing, if you have questions, if there's things that you would like more information about, we are happy to do that. This Actually, five-part series came because we do have questions from buyers all the time. And Rhonda and I thought, well, let's just put it out here and let's answer it. Yeah. We do shows once a week. So please follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Melissa Harmel Realtor. And we will see you again next week for part four of our five-part credit series.